you can get up safe and doing cocaine. When did your lawyer say he was coming to get us? Well, if they're gonna get arrested breaking into anyone's place, of course it's gonna be that of the political advisor. Interesting though that we know that his ex-candidate is also sick, but their contact was less about white sheets and more about white powder. Very excited to be reacting to House MD season seven, episode six of his politics. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 house videos, and this will be episode 138. Let's see if we can get the diagnosis before house does as a doctor working in London. This election day, the fate of our borders is in your hands. John Moreno wants to give them the American dream. Whose side is he really on? This ad wins you the election. Absolutely not. This could totally galvanize the left. What the hell? It's not a rash. Maybe I should call a doctor. Meet your new team member. Her name is Martha M. Masters. Sure. She's a third year med student. She graduated high school when she was 15. This isn't a suggestion. Presents with palpable purpura and ALT and AST are through the roof. Martha M. Masters? Her turn-ons include learning to be a doctor. Gotti thinks she's some kind of genius. 20th decimal of Euler's number. Six. It's my favorite constant. Our patient's liver damage explains the rash and cryoglobulins we found in his blood. But what about toxic exposure? Tetrachloroethylene. Go to his house, give me some chemicals. Being around house, he's such a legend. He's so intimidating. Can't do this, I'm sorry. I'm not thrilled someone else might be the smartest person on the team now. I can only imagine how you feel. You find this? Orchards make cider out of apples they can't sell otherwise, like if they've fallen onto the ground. Start the patient on Astrianam and plasmapheresis. I think we should tell our patient about breaking into his house. Medicine's like politics. At the end of the day, all that matters is result. Why am I noticing some foreshadowing level political symmetry between this episode and the current political climate? I suppose the same issues have fundamentally split society for decades. What will definitely be splitting the team though is having a new member who might not just be smarter than the others, but even House as well. I also love the fact that she's a med student as it will make it just that much sweeter when she shows her stuff. She's also gonna have to get Taub and Foreman to do all her procedures for her since she'll have the ideas but won't be licensed to do it herself. Or maybe she can with supervision, I suppose, if it's a blood test or a simple procedure. I definitely wouldn't want a med student biopsying my brain though, regardless of how many PhDs they have. So what do we know about our results-oriented patient so far? He started with a rash, which is what we call purpuric, which is like small bleeds in the skin. Now we know his liver tests that show the state of the actual liver tissue are deranged, but his infectious hepatitis tests are normal. He also has high levels in his blood of something called cryoglobulins, which can happen because of liver disease, but we still don't know what took his liver for a nice roast dinner and never called it back. So what are our options here? As a political consultant, he probably travels a lot. He could have gone away and caught himself malaria from a trip. We also know he is very results oriented. So maybe there was some not so savory business he had to take care of in a malaria endemic country that led to it. I could see that developing here. He could also have an autoimmune condition, but that wouldn't quite fit the storyline. How else could his workaholic nature fit? Maybe he could have a blood cancer, but ignore the signs because the election is just too important. Either way, I'm going for malaria as my first diagnostic guess. I bet he was too busy to take the tablet prophylaxis as well. Let's find out. Honesty and integrity matter. I would love to have someone like you as an opponent. Mr. Dugan? He's paralyzed. Call Foreman and Chase, get him down here. The clock must have broken up before we could find it. This could be caused by Wilson's disease. Hooray! You popped your cherry. First time always sucks. Rules are just helpful guidelines for stupid people who can't make up their own mind. You obviously don't fit into that category. CT from his neck to his abdomen for neuroendocrine tumors. D-dimer and fibrinogen for DIC. She's got principles. She's like the love child of Einstein and Mary Poppins. I'm not good at working with other people. It's all about the cases. You help him crack this one, you two are gonna get along just fine. There's no sign of a tumor that leaves the IC. This whole Taub's an old man thing kind of rings hollow. Tonight after work, meet at the basketball courts in the gym. Tonight after work? Who else knows that you leaked that ad? This morning's tracking has me within two points. Foreman. What about Henoch Schoenlein purpura? The vasculitis would explain the kidney problem. We treat with chemotherapy or steroids. Chemo is the more effective treatment. If we explain both the benefits and the risks of each treatment, I'm sure Dugan will choose chemo. I'll take the steroids. 
<laughs> you couldn't put together a better representation of book versus street smarts if you tried. Street smarts is probably an incorrect word for it though. If you tried to put street smarts into a scientific lens, it would probably be broken down into the culmination of experience, emotional intelligence, and resourcefulness. Other than the emotional domains though, the other categories can be developed and done so faster with her oversized cerebral walnut than that of us mere mortals. So in time, her book smarts will become street smarts, and even though the words contain none of them, she'll have to take a few L's to get there. The biggest L would be losing the patient though, so what do we know about him so far? He's had blood in the urine in addition to his messed up liver tests, cryoglobulins, and rash. The team now think he has something called Henoch-Schonlein purpura, which is the most common type of vasculitis that affects the full body. Interestingly, they want to give him chemotherapy and steroids, even even though most patients actually do resolve on their own within a few weeks. Steroids sounds like the more sensible option here rather than taking his immune system to the cleaners, but House isn't happy with that decision. Interestingly though, if he did actually have malaria like I suspected earlier, then dark urine would be the next step. It's funny as well how in these episodes they automatically assume a patient's kidneys are failing because there's blood in them, even though they don't confirm that with an actual blood test. What's ironic about it is that the worst kidney failure actually produces no urine, which is a major problem rather than bloody urine itself, which is still a pretty bad problem, but not as bad. Why? Well, because if we don't pee, that means our body is accumulating all the fluid which can seep into our tissues and lungs or even overload the heart causing failure. That's what dialysis does, replaces the jobs of the kidneys, filtering the blood for toxins and excess fluid. This without treatment could actually kill a person within a few weeks, whereas blood in the urine might be caused by cancer, which potentially might kill someone over the course of months or years, unless the bleeding is so torrential that it could be imminently deadly. But that's very unlikely. The reason why I don't think it's Henoch Shonlin Purpura though, is that usually presents on the legs and it tends to affect the bowels as well, since more often than not, it's a gut infection that's the trigger. I can imagine the steroids would make the infection worse if it is that, and there are a ton of others like Epstein-Barr virus, known as kissing disease, or cytomegalovirus that can cause it. Maybe our political advisor is a bit closer to the senator than we know about and ended up getting Epstein-Barr virus from him. Oh, that would work so well. All right, I'm going for Epstein-Barr infection from the senator as my second diagnostic guess. Let's get more clues. One, nothing. Three, nothing. You're gonna beat me with that? I was wrong. You're not so old. Thank you. They were gonna give him the wrong medicine? The wrong medicine is the right medicine. I'm gonna tell him what's going on. No, you're not. You're fired. If you do, I'll get you thrown out of medical school. Firing her was a mistake. We need someone like her on the team, keeping us all in check. You can develop pulmonary edema, it's not an HSP. This is his right. Could be an infection. Schistosomiasis wouldn't respond to estriodem. Break into his home, give me some escargot. Need a minute. She's a potential star, and I want her in my hospital. Just find her a different department. No snails, let's get out of here. Where the hell are you guys? In jail. Our patient's liver, kidneys, and lungs are failing. I need you to help me figure out why. So you're rehired. Shh. You can violate my trust. No other recourse than to fire him from my campaign. Oh, you're fired again. He screwed you. Well, I mean, he actually screwed you, taking weekend trips down to Bunbury. He's got a red blotch on his hand. That's polymer erythema. He's got hepatitis C. You can get hep C from doing cocaine. It's hiding all your secrets by producing cryoglobulins, so the hep C tests come back negative. This is interferon. It delays the onset of rigor mortis. When did your lawyer say he was coming to get us? Well, if they're gonna get arrested breaking into anyone's place, of course it's gonna be that of the political advisor. Interesting though that we know that his ex-candidate is also sick, but their contact was less about white sheets and more about white powder. House thinks the cryoglobulins, which are atypical proteins in the blood, are interfering with the hepatitis C test, which is why it's coming back negative. This is an actual documented problem as these proteins can trap the antibodies and virus making it less likely to be detected. Impressive accuracy from the writers. The patient is starting to look a bit more yellow as well, which could be because of the pigment accumulating in his blood as it slowly cleared less 
from the liver. If this was the whole story though, then this would be quite a short episode, so surely there's something else we're missing. Maybe he does have hep C and the interferon works, but he gets sick again. If he's hiding the cocaine use, then what else is he hiding? Hidden mistresses, deals with arms dealers, secret meetings with Spice Girls. Okay, that last one may not be relevant. Now, if we take what the hep C could cause, that might solve the liver, but usually it doesn't affect kidneys and lungs, so what else could cause that? That is very much a vasculitis type picture, but maybe it was the wrong type. I know I use this a lot, but granulomatosis with polyangitis could actually work here with lungs and kidneys being affected, that would mean coughing up blood or nosebleeds would be next on the list. Thrombotics, thrombocytopenic purpura, where the platelets, which are the glue of the blood, could do it as well, but wouldn't fit as nicely. All right, granulomatosis with polyangitis is my third and final diagnostic guess. Let's see if I'm right. I know. The reason you hated Mass is from the moment you saw her. I interviewed her for Hopkins Med School. She didn't remember me. I've decided to rehire you. Yes. He's not responding to interferon. German research studies showed that 15% of patients with hep C were cured after contracting hep A. Good work. You're fired. Get me proof he has hep C, and then you can give him hep A. The two of you have a combined IQ north of 300. We need a false positive hep C test. I have lied to Cuddy 10,000 times. How do you think she'd feel about 10,001? Be honest and face the medical consequences or lie and face the personal consequences. Now that you're my doctor, you uh, you can't tell anybody, right? Blood test confirming hep C. Fire load came up, finally showed up on the test. Prove yourself to me, no more games. Get Dugan to let us give him hep A. There is an 85% chance that this will kill you. He's risking his career to give you this chance. He wouldn't do that if there was any other choice. I'm hiring an idiot. I don't want you to just lie to a patient. I want you to want to lie to a patient. See you tomorrow. I heard Dugan is already responding to treatment. You interviewed me, right? She had me when she called you a coward. Thank you, New Jersey, for re-electing me to the United States Senate. Do you know where the senator's records are? How saw him in the clinic? I guess it wasn't medical. Is everything okay? I don't think so. Hep A to cure Hep C, the whole masters back and forth, the cover up with Cuddy feels like season seven is officially heating up. Now there are a lot more treatments since this was filmed for Hep C other than interferon. In fact, they're even starting to eradicate the virus fully and they're way more effective than any other treatment curing the infection in up to 90% of patients. Examples include drugs like sofosbuvir, ledisbuvir, and velpatazvir, as well as different combinations of them. In all fairness though, there is zero evidence that I'm aware of that hep A can cure hep C, although they can definitely make each other worse. Still a great episode overall, I've got to say one of my favorite in season seven with the whole masters back and forth. 8.3 out of 10 entertainment, 7.6 out of 10 diagnosis because it wasn't majorly spicy, but the whole cryoglobulin aspect was pretty cool, and 7.8 out of 10 accuracy. This episode only makes full sense though when you watch a previous one where a mother gets her daughter to film a close-up of her childbirth here.